Hey, spaghetti go. Hey, y'all. This is Robert, and you're watching Day Bird Aviaries, and we got a whole mess of baby birds we're going to feed today. Are you ready? All right, let's get going. All right, so the little cockatiel knows how to fly, obviously. Now, a lot of people would go ahead and trim the wing feathers right now, and that's okay if that's what you think you need to do. I, however, think that it's important that the little birds learn how to fly. However, I do think that it is beneficial to have their wings trimmed once they go to a pet home, especially if it's especially if it's for the first time bird owner. Oh, look, this is our little ball-headed baby cockatiel. This is the one who uh, came from a different set of parents, and they they pulled the feathers out on the back of their head. Now, y'all know that I like the naked neck chickens. I don't really like naked neck cockatiels very much. I love the cockatiel, but I would prefer that she not have a naked neck. Y'all remember the story in the Bible about Elijah and the kids were making fun of him and said, go up thy bald head, go up thy bald head. You remember that, Jeremiah? You know what happened to those little mean kids? Dad? The Bible says a she-bear came out of the woods and ate them all. What do you think of that? Don't you think make it's fun. a gold bow? Yeah, don't make fun of bald, bald-headed people. Well, there's our little cockatiels. Beautiful, aren't they? She still wants some more food. Look at that. You <laughs> see that? Bless her little heart. <laughs> You, you, you can't hold anymore. There's not room. There's not room. You're like Jeremiah eating a pumpkin pie. You think you gotta eat the whole thing? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I okay, do. let's get the little yellow lovebird out. Okay. Now look, they're just little lovebirds everywhere. Now these four are all from the same parents. And this little yellow one, it's actually a pallid. It's a pallid opaline. One of my favorite color combinations. Oh, they're, they're just everywhere. It's like Mark Malone all over again. Y'all remember him? He was with Martha Stewart and he had all the ferrets and monkeys and puppies and cats all on the table at the same time. I think I say that just about every Friday, but when Jeremiah puts all the birds over here at the same time, I feel like him, like I can't really keep track of them. But Jeremiah thinks it makes for a better video when they're all on the table at the same time. I don't think I ever said that. I think he just doesn't like bringing them one at a time. He brings the whole bowl full over here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want some? You want because some? you got them in the bowl, so I'm not bring them in the bowl. Now look, this one, you can see it's got a different down color. She's going to be a different color than these other three. But we're going to keep... We're going to keep almost all of these. One of these three, we're going to let my friend Beth pick one. And she's going to take one to keep as her pet. But we're going to keep this, this yellowish one. And maybe one of these others will be a mate for her eventually. These are all going to be a par blue color. What we used to call Dutch blue. And we're going to see them all grow up. They're going to start getting feathers in, in the next week or so. But aren't they just adorable? And they love their daddy. Look at that. You know what? This little beady one? I didn't feed him yet. Her. That's probably a her. I always count when I have so many babies at one time that I'm feeding. And I always count, and I knew that there was one that didn't get fed. So I have five babies here, and I only fed four. You want a little bit more? You've had some food. Now you can tell on the babies, they have this crop area. And you just fill that crop area up. That's like, It's like a little bag in their esophagus before their stomach. They don't really have a stomach quite exactly like we do. They have a... Proventricular, proventriculus. That's um, it's a gizzard. And um, seed-eating birds, they'll actually swallow small stones or grit. Rather, we give our chickens grit or little gravels and sand, and they swallow that down, and that helps to grind up the food that they eat. 
Now, of course, these are the baby birds. They don't need that because they're getting a, so they're getting this formula that's all ground up. So these are the little love birds. I think we have two little green cheeks. All right, now these are the two little green cheek babies that we're feeding currently. These are siblings to the little one that Jeremiah calls Ari, the one that has the underbite, and we're going to feed him next. But uh, let's go ahead and get these babies some food. Here, guys. There you go. Look at that. Look how cute and adorable they are. Now, these are the turquoise mutation green cheek conure. And they're just one of my very most favorite birds ever. People often ask me, what's your favorite bird? And they're sometimes stunned at the answer that I give, but it's whichever bird is in front of me at any given moment because I kind of like them all. Jeremiah has asked me, what birds do you not like? And really, I can't think of any group of birds that I don't like. Now, Amazon parrots are not my very most favorite bird, but we do have some of those, and they're okay. But I like, and that's just because they're mean to me. They don't like me. I've never met an Amazon that likes me, and I don't know why. But I like them just fine. Now, Captain asked me the other day, what are these yellow feathers for here at the base of their tail? You know what that's for, Jeremiah? You know why they're yellow? That is their oil gland. They have a gland at the base of their tail, and it produces a, a oily substance, and they use that oil to groom their feathers with. That's what makes a duck's feathers waterproof, and they're able to float. But of course, green cheek conures, they don't swim in water, but they still use that oil to groom themselves. They'll take their beak and wrap their head around and play with that little gland a little bit, and they'll get the oil on their beak. And then they'll wipe it all over their feathers to clean their feathers. Oh. And this one has it too. It's just starting to get covered up with regular feathers right now. But as far as, as far as I know, most birds have that in varying degrees. Now some birds have produced what's called powder down, like a cockatoo or a cockatiel. And they use that powder to help clean their feathers. But most birds have that oil gland. Okay, let's go get Ari, okay? Ari, Jeremiah named him. He, he, he's not wanting to eat anymore. He just wants to fly around. But, um, why did you name him Ari? Because a YouTuber I watch, she has a bird named Ari, and it's a game stick just like I Ari. Now, these are siblings. Ari is the older brother to these two. He's the one that has that underbite. That goofy beak, can, can you see that goofy beak? No, yeah, probably I think not. So. But he's starting to hold it correctly now, and so it's not going to be a problem. If I let go of him, he's going to fly off. Again, I don't want to cut his wings. I don't ever want to cut his wings. Um, but when I let go of him, he flies directly onto Jeremiah's head, which is funny, I think. But these are the green cheek conures that we're hand feeding right now. We're not really hand feeding him much anymore. He's eating. He's eating on his own. So that's that. Right. Let's feed the uh, ring neck next, okay? Turn that off. Now here's our, our beautiful, beautiful little ring neck. Now y'all know that these are these are some of my most favorite birds of all. But this you. one, I don't think this one's ever gonna wean. She just enjoys being hand fed way too much. This is the one that had gone to a friend and my friend decided that she wasn't ready for the ring neck yet. And so she brought him back to me, which is perfectly fine. But while she, she was there, she got a haircut and got her wings trimmed. And so that's why she's not flying off right now. But she still wants some formula, still begs to be fed. And so I oblige. She's, she's eating. She's eating pellets and she's eating soft foods and fruits and vegetables and stuff. She's off, off screen right now. Too close to edge. There we go. See, she can't fly away. Although she certainly wants to. But that's okay. Alright, are we going to feed the Quaker? Yeah, and then I'll... Right, here's my sweet little itty bitty teeny tiny little parrotlet. Now again, if I let go of her, she's going to fly up on top of Jeremiah's head. But we're going to see if she wants to eat. She ate last night. 
We'll see if she wants to eat some now. She's eating a little. Let's see. She's as small as my thumb. She's just an itty bitty little thing. And she's all messy. Let me clean that up. So there she is. And that's all that she can eat. That's all that her little body can hold. Cause she's just, but she's, she's smaller than a canary. Way smaller than a parakeet. Not much bigger than a zebra finch. Smaller than little sparrows in the parking lot down at the grocery store. These are the smallest parrots commonly found in captivity. There are a few parrot species that are smaller than this that are only found in the wild that only eat mushrooms. They're called pygmy parrots and they're not found in captivity at all. So that's Elby and we're going to feed that little Quaker now, okay? Oh, look, this is Mary Carl's little Quaker parrot. He is almost ready to go. He's refusing most meals. So I just wanted to give you an idea. We're going to trim his wings soon. And there he goes. Okay, so now's the time. We're going to trim this little bird's wings. Now, we're going to spread the wings out. Look, 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 look. Now, if I were doing this and not trying to film it, I could be done very quickly, but I'm going to try to educate just a little bit. I'm going to gently hold the wing out. This little portion of the wing, right here to right here, that's the little tip end of the wing. That's like where all the little fingers are. The second portion, from here to here, if you've ever eaten a chicken wing, that's the portion that has the two little bones in it, and that corresponds to this part of your arm. And then from the shoulder, which is here on the bird, where it attaches to the, the body, to this part, that's going to be like your upper arm where your bicep is. And I'm giving you the anatomy lesson so that you know which feathers to cut. These are called the primary flight feathers. These are the feathers that are growing on that little tip. If you've eaten a chicken wing, it's that little tip end that doesn't have any meat on it that you don't really eat. These are the feathers that you want to cut. Generally, it's the first 10 feathers. And you want to cut them to where they are, to where they come with these feathers, this second line of feathers, these tiny small feathers here. Those are called the flight feather covert, C-O-V-E-R-T. They cover the primary flight feathers. These feathers are the secondary flight feathers you do not want to trim those. And so, if you're unsure of this, then get a veterinarian to do this for you. I trim the feathers at an angle like this to begin with. Eventually, most people would trim, most people would trim straight like this. I think it just looks nicer like this. And for a young bird, having that extra little bit of feathers is going to help them to glide down gently to the ground and not just fall. And so again, we are only trimming the primary flight feathers and I trim at an angle. Always trim off any frayed ends. Do not cut any further back than, do not cut any further closer to the bird's body then the secondary flight feathers, which are the smaller feathers that cover these primary flight feathers. Now, again, if you are unsure of how to do this, then do not do it. If you cut through an immature feather, then your little bird can possibly bleed to death. So do not do this if you are unsure of what you're doing. But now this little bird is grounded. It's going to take him a day or so to realize he, he can't fly up. Jeremiah's head anymore, but now he's going to be ready to go to his new home. Yeah, you want to step up, don't you? Such a pretty, pretty, sweet little precious Bye. baby. We are so excited to get this bird to Mary Carl at Coghill Farm. And so we may, we're going to try to do that within the next... Well guys, thank you for watching this video. I sure, I sure do appreciate you watching. I enjoy bringing you this information week after week. Um, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, give us a, a thumbs up, leave us a comment, and uh, we're going to let this cat finish eating this formula. 
So I took Jonathan to work this morning, Jeremiah, and I took him uh, by Jack to get him a biscuit. And I was at the drive through window, and the lady at the window, she looked at me, she had this look of horror on her face, and she said, you're not wearing a mask. You know what I told her? I said, I'm not wearing underwear either. <laughs> she shut up and just gave me the biscuit and left. Mm, I'm scared of now.